Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video on the Tool Teardown channel. In today's video, part two of the new Einhell Cordless router kit. I'll put the number of the type description down there. If you haven't seen it already, part number one is up there. Click that link and you'll get up to speed with everything that you need to know about how it works, what's in the box. In this video, we're going to take it to bits. So let's get straight into it. Right, let's start with the accessories. And then we're going to go and go into the electronics, the heart of the machine, if you like, a little bit later on in the video. So I think most of the accessories, they're all made out of metal, stamped metal. Uh, some of them are painted. Um, others are machined, galvanized. You know, this is just stamped out of a sheet and then galvanized so yeah most of this stuff pretty straightforward i don't think we have to go into too much detail there the dust extraction that comes with or the dust extraction port i should say that comes with the plunge base is made out of a polycarbonate it's it's this way around so i don't know if you can see it there but um the polycarbonate the type of plastic so this is a very hard very strong fairly st scratch resistant after about 10 years in the sun this gets really brittle and it'll break very easily on you until that point nothing really wrong there they do this because it's um it's, it's very strong so it won't actually shatter all that easily um <clears throat> when bits of wood hit it the same goes for the dust extraction on the palm router base which is held in with a little screw on the side here as i'll now demonstrate there we go so that just um, comes out like that so the screw hole there and a little peg there's a bit of dust on there because i did use it there that clips into this little hole there like so and then the screw goes in there pretty straightforward there in case you wonder how to put it together and again uh it's polycarbonate again the isc logo so isc is the parent organization if you like of the einhell brand what have we got here so this is the uh, edge guide that goes on to uh, here slides in like this and uh, you can then fine adjust it with this screw so you can have this more and then you can lock it like so and then you have this as, a, as an edge guide and as you can hear I mentioned this in uh, the first video that we did where we did the unboxing that this is a rather noisy I just held it near to the microphone there for your hearing pleasures. I doubt this is an actual bearing, so let's have a look. Yes, as I was saying, this is just a very simple metal bushing that runs on a somewhat peculiar looking fastener. And the rest of it is uh, fairly straightforward. So it's got some of these um, knobs, which they're all the same. A die cast aluminium painted in a well, gray color of sorts. I wouldn't know what to describe the color, but yeah, it's a gray. Uh, you can see the difference against the machine aluminium there. It's uh, slightly darker. Yeah nothing spectacular there so let's put this to the side for now um, then we already had a look at this shenanigans as I mentioned in the first video go and check it out if not that yeah it's 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 okay it, it sort of gets you going but if you really want some precision frequent sort of repetitive use out of milling for a project of sorts then you're probably not going to find yourself using this so much and you'll buy yourself one of these aftermarket jigs right moving on to the palm router base 
Now this is a fairly straightforward unit. The main housing is made out of an aluminium, which is a die cast aluminium casted as such, which is why you get all these shapes. Then it goes into a painting process to give it this satin semi-gloss, whatever you want to call it, slightly gray color paint. The little bits of schmutz. Huh? There you go. There's a bit there as well. I get that's where the finishing process isn't done to the exact same standards as those of sort of more premium tools because they can't afford spending that kind of time on the finishing of these kinds of tools which leads me on to the next topic it's um it's a bit dusty this one but you can see the rubber added rubber padding for vibrations grip um you know to hold it it's um yeah it's already peeling off they used some sort of a adhesive which i think when it got a bit hot because you can see it all around the edges everywhere which now is covered in sawdust there's some excess sticking out which you can sort of clean up but yeah it's it's all over the place this this side is even worse um so yeah that's if you look at for example this version from the world they actually have a plastic overmold that they screw onto the aluminium casing and that plastic has the rubberized parts molded into as you have for example with a a drill which is a lot more durable this stuff will come off because I, I just you know pulled on this corner for a bit here and it's already sort of without much effort it's already peeling so I, yeah I could see this whole thing not lasting all that long unfortunately which is a shame because otherwise it rotational direction on there actually i was looking for that in the other video but i found it now there's an arrow there so you know what way to move your router to get the best results then we have the tensioner so basically this is a like a hose clamp a pipe clamp so you tighten this up and the whole thing squeezes itself around the body of your router motor unit if you like we can call it that why is this not coming out is this like there we go oh there's so much dust in there um so yeah this just basically slots in here and then you clamp it down and then we have obviously the fine adjustment this little teeth this gearing uh, which sort of grabs into these openings there to give you that option for fine adjustment personally i think that the walt solution where you have that rotating ring on the outside of the housing is quite a neat solution uh, this is less accurate i guess depends a bit on how you use it but yeah a simple um center metal gearing it is like a a metal where is my magnet it is a magnet uh, it is a metal because it's magnetic so it's not some aluminium or something so it's nice and then another one of these i think the only other thing that we can talk about here is um yeah the machining is obviously done at speed with a milling bit that is big enough to do this um this whole um section in one go um, because it's got a little step in it um, they either do it as like a two-stage process honing machines um, where they obviously have one size for this one size for this and then after which which i guess you can't see at the minute but there's this little peg there which gets screwed in from out here and then it's covered up with this rubber piece now this is a replaceable serviceable part or at least it should be I'm just trying to get the screws out with a little impact driver because they're so damn tight. I managed to get one out before I'm completely knackered the other ones. Um, yeah, that's basically the size of screws that they're held in with. I think they went a little bit heavy on the talking there. So let's 
let's leave that for now then I guess. Let's move on to the plunge router base. Now the, the bit about this one is that obviously it plunges, so it's got two springs in here, in these arms. And then this is the lock, so when you push it down, you lock it in place and that sort of secures it so that you can router away at that set depth of you have selected. Now again, it, this is a cast aluminium piece, which they then machined. Well, after they painted it, they painted it first, then machined it, as you can see on the inside. A little bit rough again, but then again, they do this at speed. A little polycarbonate cover. Again, with the ISC logo in there, it's, it's backwards, so this is really how you should read it, if, if that comes up on the light. But yeah, um, that's that bit. Rubber overmolded plastic handles held in with an allen key on each side and then uh, we have some very simple but I guess effective way of securing the router into the plunge base this is literally just a bolt with a similar fastener as on the palm router base with a little bushing in there to hold the two together and to basically give you the clamping force that you need on there. Uh, again, this is like a, an oval shaped hole that you squeeze up to make this piece fit in there nice and snug. Okay, so let's take a look at these screws and see if we can remove them. Let's see if that's gonna work. Ooh. Not as silly tight as these three that I already room two of in the base of that one. So this piece is actually somewhat serviceable, which is nice. So I can show you what lies underneath there. This is how it should be really. I mean, it's a piece of plastic. You don't need to silly tighten them. Warp the material causing cracks and, oh dear. Oh, it's also providing you with a secret storage compartment for sawdust. It's bloody full of it. So if you want to hide a contraband from your wife, that's where you put it. <laughs> bloody hell. Right, there we go. So this is the base of the plunge router. Base. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the brain fart there for a moment. And some sort of a logo there. I don't know if you guys see that on the camera. I'm just trying to figure out that was a production. Like uh, the company that m makes these on behalf of Inel or if it's something else. But on the inside you can see the um, the aluminium is also painted on the inside here. So what they do is they cast these, paint it and then machine all the surfaces, which is why this is all nice and shiny and this has got the same dark gray tint as the outside. Um, yeah. Then you can already see there's some tubes here, which is where the, yeah, those metal tubes that are pressed in the base there and then with some locking pegs locked into place. Um, they just they just go in through the holes here. Oh, framing in there. Those pegs, so they basically hold the assembly together of these two metal tubes. Right then, the plastic base, which is the same material as on uh, this one, just a slightly different form. So what have we got here? So this is ABS plastic. So yeah, nice and cheap, very um, pliable, huh? very flimsy. Um, but yeah, as it needs to slide nicely, you can make this stuff nice and smooth. It's quite soft, so it doesn't scratch your workpiece, your wood or whatever you're doing. Um, and it's replaced, as you can see, it's very sensitive to scratches and stuff. But once this is so far knackered, uh, always got very deep marks in it. It's already got one in there. There, um, on there. you can just um, throw this one out and put a new one on. Then your height adjuster, which I already mentioned in the first video. This is your locking ring, so that you can then um, you know secure it in place. So this is basically the locking ring for both the fine adjustment as well as the quick release. 
for the quick adjustment. And you can obviously take it all the way out. And then all there is is a metal piece and a little plastic locking ring. And and it's all. I think this knob comes out. Um, it twists probably. And then behind it is a little spring that gives it the pretension when it's unlocked. So that's pretty straightforward. And then you can have a, a good look at the scaling. So we've got millimeters and inches. I think I did mention this in the first video, but yeah, if you look at the scaling on the actual router housing, it's the other way around. So don't get yourself confused looking at the wrong scale. It's millimeters on that side, inches there, and then inches and millimeters just the other way around. So that's just a, a little thing that could trick you out there. Right, then let's have a look. Whoa, let's lock this for a moment so that we can actually undo it. Now, I think this might be one of the springs. I've got a bit of a thing with springs huh? firing in my face. So let's do this carefully. Right, oh, that's not too bad. Right. Oh, that's uh, a bit disappointing. That's just a finishing piece, just to make it look symmetrical, really. So that's just a, a rubber EPDM, little rubber molding there with a metal washer and a little Phillips head screw. And that's not very spectacular there. But yeah, that's to that point. Right, let's see if we can get one of these handles off and see what's lying behind there. Won't be very spectacular. Little Alan key, eh? Alan. Or in a hex, eh? As they call them. Spring washer, washer, standard issue. Alan bolt. And this is just a nice plastic molded grip. And then the, the red stuff basically is a PA6. If I can see any markings on here, no, I cannot. I assume it's a PA6. Let's put it to the test by scrapey scrapey and see if we can hold it. Oh yeah, some glass fiber scrapes there. So glass fiber reinforced plastic, which is standard for your tools. The red stuff. And then the black stuff is the um, over molding that you see basically on hand tools, power tools these days. Feels nice and solid this. This is nice. So yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, more premium tools that come with cheaper solutions here. Um, but yeah, no, I like that. Now, one of the things that you obviously want to know as a uh, user is if, if the whole machine is nice and flat which you can just about see some light go through. Oh, there's a little bit in it, but not a lot. This, um, all right, there we go. A little spring clip, buggers to get off or pull back on. And then same as on the other side, a little rubber molding with a little metal washer in there. And then, yeah, you can feel this is the, the bit that's spring loaded, so. What's holding it back? I thought it was going to be that, but I think we might have to take this one off as well. And then this thing is going to fly us around the ears, I think. Markings on here, but I can't see any. From the touchy-feely point of view, I think it's a PA6 with a 30% glass fiber reinforcement in there. FYI. Right, and then you have a spring on here that provides the, um, the, the release action motion which is aluminium because that's not magnetic so that's actually quite neat so aluminium housing aluminium fastener in there so obviously so you don't get the um, corrosive reaction there between metal and aluminium there you go so yeah, this is what tightens the the plunge base down and also stops it from flying out right there we have it okay that's fairly simple Oh, interesting solution. So because this side has the tensioner on it, which clamps onto this tube, the spring on this side is in there, as you can see. 
so this one will come out from the other end on this side it's out here which is uh, just a spring with a, a rubber uh, sorry a plastic end piece there so it sits nicely in the top there not rattling around and they actually made the I don't know if you can see in the hole there but they made the aluminium casting quite neat so it sits snug in there and then on the other side it's a tapered hole at the end so all in all they did a neat job at this aluminium casting and then there's some um, nylon bushings in here I suspect we can just pop them out there we go I'll just put one out there because they'll be the same yeah a nylon bushing is it nylon it might be a transparent PA6 actually yeah it might be a PA6 material so this is basically just as a gasket if you like to stop the um, smudge the dirt the dust from getting in these mechanisms so these run well there's a bit there's a bit of play around there so it's not that tight but yeah just as a bit of a barrier for the dust to get in there but as you can see I've used this for about a week and it's already dirty in there so the problem with these kind of dust making machines is that it will go everywhere pretty much instantly right I think that'll explain the base in uh, quite some detail let's move on to the actual business end of the device which is the router so let's start by removing my router bit from here so you can see the spindle lock in action now um, oops, it is. let's just unlock this quickly okay there we go right then this is obviously the eight millimeter collar for your eight millimeter bits there's a six millimeter one in the box as well if you're using the thinner shank router bits right so we'll probably start by taking these out I'll speed this up so you don't have to look at this for five minutes. Okay, and then we have to do the uh, innumerable thing of cutting these stickers in half so we can get in it. And that's how you get caught when you hand it in for your warranty. They can see that you've been in it. They can see that you've been in there. It's a shame really that they do it like this, but it'd be too complicated otherwise, it'd be too expensive. Right. Then there's two more fasteners in there. Thing is they're all the same Phillip head screws, so you can fix it with a screwdriver. Oh dear, so uh -huh. So you can already see here the um, red bits of plastic that are coming out with the fastener. So uh -huh. they might have over tightened that one. That'll be fun putting that together. Right, let's have a look in here if we can see any more hidden fasteners. I don't think we do. I bet it'll be under the black plastic. But yeah, let's give it a go. Right. Oh, there we go. She's coming. She's coming. Oh, I think it's... Whoa! Whoa, 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 that went quick all of a sudden. So, the aluminium housing is literally just an aluminium housing, as you can see. Ah, so in here, they do have some locating pegs for the grippy bit here. Although the edges are still glued down, so they probably could do with putting them close to the edge, so that this would be, but hey, probably nitpicking there. So yeah, nicely machined. Let's put some light in it so you guys can see as well. Nothing wrong there, I think. And then they have this little spring of a thingy that lives down the bottom there. 
to give a bit of pretension on the bearing because this thing obviously spins up to 30,000 RPMs. <laughs> Talking about the bearing, the bit that holds this end of the motor together as well because I took it out of the housing and you can already hear it's quite loose. It's a 6032RZ, so a deep groove ball bearing with a plastic shielding on both sides to keep the crap out. As you can already see, it's not all that tight inside the aluminium housing because look at all the rubbing marks. So it's already carving a path in the housing there, as you can see. So if when you're wondering why your machine makes such a horrible noise it's probably because that bearing at that end has a bit of play because it's eaten away at the aluminium housing and this motor unit let's just put the light back where it is so you guys can see is wobbling a little bit so that's not so sexy there but I guess for assembly purposes they don't want to have it too much of a press fitting because then it'd be awkward to put it together Together, I guess. Anyway, moving on. So now we have it apart. There's two more fasteners in these holes, and that should get us inside all its glory. And look at all this brushless technology going on here. Eh? Pure power, as they now call it, eh? as of the start of this year. Ten-year warranty. Let's see if we can already identify if that ten-year is ambitious or not by having a look at the motor I did mention it in the previous video but if you haven't watched it eh, there's now also a three year warranty on all your batteries which is a year more than it used to be last year which is nice even if you already bought them and they were still in warranty you got the extra oh, yeah. I think some of the some of the greases from inside there are coming out through the cracks look at it Yeah, all the screws, they're all the same. No difference there. Right, let's see if we... Um... And the other thing you can see up here is the two LEDs. Connect it with this little circuit board type connector with the two... I um, don't know if you can see that, is that in focus? There we go, with the two bars basically connecting both LEDs because um, the, the supply to the power source comes on one side and then obviously it gets it across like that neatly around the bearing running past the fan eh? but yeah as I mentioned in the first video I, I personally don't find these LEDs particularly bright if I'm honest um, if you look at a drill an impact driver uh, the LEDs that come in in here are at least twice the brightness just subjectively looking at them um, it's in the first video go and check it out if you haven't already but yeah let's um let's see what 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 we got here oh, let's do it this way because the buttons and stuff are on that side so there we have it the inner workings of the Einhell brushless professional router cordless 18 volt Nice. Dusty. Let's clean it up a bit. Right, cleaned it up a bit so we can see some number. WS5225 is the number that we can see on the motor. And on the other side of there, you can see the little ball bearing that supports the other side of the motor of this router. As I was saying in the first video, this is a direct drive. So you can see the shaft where you put your very fast spinning sharp bits that mill, mill, mill your wood, your workpiece, are directly attached to the brushless energy. Pure power motor, eh? as they now call it. Right, let's see if we can get all these goodies out and um, go through them. Right. right, so here we have the inner workings of the Einhell. So let's have a look at the plastic clam shells if, if you like so basically these clam around all the electronics so let's have a look at the fit and finish a little bit of um, 
warpage there not as super tight as you can see on some of them because they're uh, they're quite stiff um, but then I guess they're held inside an aluminium case so probably doesn't matter as much but yeah you can see the the branding on the inside so we're looking at a PA6 with a 30% glass fiber reinforcement on both sides which is nice so two great plastics there nothing wrong the top especially feels nice and stiff uh, the pre-molding for the battery clip the positive retention for the battery clip and then obviously the battery slides in in, in these in these shapes the only downside I find is as you can see here the um, sticker if you like that's also the button uh, you can see them here they will wear out eventually um, especially if you operate with gloves on which you sometimes tend to do with woodworking as you can see on this battery the old one that got is um, yeah there's just a hole so you're just looking at the button underneath it which is the dust rubbish gets in there and then after a while you wonder why the thing starts playing up because the electronics got coated in it and stuff so personally I don't think but all the major brands sort of do it is the standard unfortunately eh? then the motor we already talked about briefly um, so a brushless motor one directional cooling fan a big beefy bearing on one side that we already looked at when we opened it up and a shaft on which the bearing is pressed from this end and on this side the fan is added this all this thing only ever turns one way Let's see if we can push out the rotor from the stator part of the electric motor I have to fight against the magnets there we go nice so this is the the brushless inners if you like so these are the individual coils that get fired up in pairs so six they get three pairs of two get fired up by the electronics in a sequence which is why there's three control wires going three feed lines going into the motor and that basically gives you the propulsion so no brushes so the steering is done by the modules in here which is why this is an aluminium case because this thing gets pretty warm and as you can see nice clear edged part number on there M O R dash K Z dash six in case you need it there you have it yeah and then they have the control wires to the buttons which are these two little things micro micro switches um, yeah I, I don't like these so much because they get caked up in dust fairly quickly and then they stop working and then your traditional sort of battery terminal which is a little bit more bigger than on other tools from the iron family that we looked at because obviously of the button assembly there um, positive and negative from your battery terminals going into the module and then the speed controller that regulates your speed from setting two all the way to six sorry from setting one all the way to six looking at number two there but there's obviously one there as well um, so yeah these are your two controls circuits basically your on off and your speed and that dictates what goes into the motor looking at the actual motor unit as you can see the bronze bushings on either side of the fixed part of the brushless motor so these are where the magnets are as you can see it sticks to it oy, oy, oy. very strong powerful permanent magnets the bronze bushings also help keeping those magnets in there so they don't go flying out because of the central fugal forces generated in there when this thing spins at 30,000 rpms full gas eh? um, yeah, and this looks a bit like uh, those fans that you see on aeroplanes which is uh, quite sexy and yeah, it looks quite cool 
Um, and as I mentioned in the first video as well, this is, I think, one of the slowest slow starts I've ever experienced in a cordless power tool as such. Um, it is very slow, so you tend to sometimes get into the wood a little bit quick and you then realise, oh, it's not quite there yet. And as you can see on this side, that shaft is partially hollow to about the point where the bearing goes, because obviously your outer bits need to go somewhere and they obviously live inside there. So that's that bit. Yeah. Can't really say anything more than that. Let's have a look at this bearing. It supplies them. This is a 607 2RZ. I mean, obviously all the good bits are hidden in here, which is all epoxied in. You can see the, the bumps and humps in the reflection of the light, um, if I focus there. Um, so the microprocessor that controls the motor um, the MOSFETs actually that are the switches that, that control the motor. Um, the microprocessor just tells the MOSFETs to go on and off in a certain fashion. Um, but yeah, that's all in there, and uh, because it's obviously all aluminium, this acts as the heat sink to get the heat out of these components because this stuff gets hot because that's what's doing all the switching very fast. So that this thing keeps spinning very fast. Right, so there we have it. So, what do we think after we took it all to bits? I think overall, in this price point at 200 euros for a full set, everything included, not bad. There's a few things that is a, hmm, you know, not as sexy as you'd like to see it from some of the major professional tool brands, but then you're looking at retail at least 100 euros more or an equivalent machine from Akita or DeWalt. If you want to go all out and you're looking at a Milwaukee cordless router kit, then you're at least 200 euros over what this one is currently selling at. Um, they use good materials, fit and finish is good for the most bit. The only part that I can criticize, as I already mentioned in the first video, is this, which I could see this completely coming off within about two years of use because all the corners are already sort of peeling, dust gets behind here, this goes stands further off, and every time you grab it, you sort of peel a bit more. If you leave it in the sun for a few days, you know, during, during building a deck or whatever in the summer. It gets nice and hot, the glue gets soggy and it'll be on the floor within no no time, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, and then these screws in the one that I got here, I can't get them out. They've torqued them up like there's no tomorrow there. Um, which, don't know why, because it's a piece of ABS plastic. It cracks if you do it too tight. Anyway, um, other than that, yeah, everything else is nice and neat. Um, good quality materials. The only other thing that I think will let you down in a few years time are these buttons because they're basically part of this sticker. Um, like on the batteries, they do tend to, you know, after a few years of use like this one, they do tend to wear out. So that's not such a long lived solution in my opinion. Physical buttons is nicer, but I guess if you look at all the other tool makers, they all do the same thing. Uh, it's uh, the industry standard. It's it's a cost-saving opportunity, so why not? Um, so yeah, I think the base tool is such great. Some of the accessories which we already covered in the first video, go and check it out if you haven't already, um, are a little bit, yeah, so-so. But there's aftermarket solutions available there. If you want more better stuff, it's out there, it's available. Most of it is universal, so it will fit one way or another. So if you're looking for a cordless router, you're starting out in woodworking or you just use it, you know, the odds, bits and bobs here and there. Certainly worth a consideration there. If you're already in the RNL platform, then it's no brainer anyway, because it's, it's something that the people who are in the RNL platform have been waiting for for years. It's been two years in the making. And uh, it's here now, and it's, uh, yeah, not bad at all. If you're a professional in the industry using this thing on a day-to-day -day basis, I think the slow start is going to annoy you because it's very slow. Um, and I guess the build quality, the longevity, has to be proven uh, by uh, ways of usage, I guess. Right, that's it for me. 
have a lovely rest of your day hope you like it give it a thumbs up if you do hit the subscribe button right there check out another exciting video just just about there and then i'll see you in one of my next videos goodbye